Speaker. Dr Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and it's my pleasure to take a call on this bill, which I think um, many of us have enjoyed its passage through this House. Um, like speakers um, before me, and I imagine after me, um, I would like to congratu congratulate Peter Beck and the team at Rocket Lab for what is a remarkable achievement. To see New Zealand join, 10 other join the ranks of 10 other countries that are capable of doing this, I think, is something that all of us um, feel a, a pride around. And Mr Speaker, I think the story of Rocket Lab and what they've achieved is an important one for, for us as legislators in this House. And it is a story of science and innovation, and it's a story of how long some of these projects take to come to fruition. So, Mr Speaker, um, I share the previous speaker's enthusiasm for what has been achieved for here, but I would like to caution him about taking political um, um, credit for where, where it's not necessarily due. Because, Mr Speaker, this is a project that goes back many years, many years before the business growth agenda was even imagined. This is something when the previous speaker said that three or four years ago, none of us in this House could have imagined that this was possible. Well, Mr Speaker, this isn't necessarily true. If we go back to 2007, when Rocket Lab designed their suborbital rocket capable of reaching heights up to 150k and plans to send scientific packages, DNA and even human ashes above Earth, according to their business development manager, Mark Rocket. Now, Mr Speaker, that, this is back in 2007, where they got to this point where they were capable of putting things up 150k in the year. So a lot of work had already occurred to get to this point. And then, Mr Speaker, I think we do need to recognise that the role the previous government and the previous Minister of Economic Development, Minister Trevor Mallard, played in bringing this project yes, through. I, that it was... Order. I, I am going to... I don't want to appear to be ungracious, but I am currently in the chair, and it is inappropriate for the member to bring me into debate. Okay. Thank you. I was Dr. just Megan paying Woods. due credit. So a previous minister of economic development who attended Rocket Lab's launch way back in 2007, saying it would enhance New Zealand's emerging reputation as a developer of first-rate technology and components. So, Mr Speaker, I think to, to imagine that this has happened because of a scheme that's been put in place in the last three or four years simply doesn't understand what an innovation cycle looks like. The kind of um, willingness to back over the long term that we need to have, that transgresses parliaments is something that we should all take from this story of Rocket Lab and their success here. Because many of the things that we want to achieve in this technology space aren't going to show us the fruits in the kinds of parliamentary cycles that we are often accustomed to. And I think this is testament to that, Mr Speaker, and to a previous government for having the vision and actually the courage to back such a project, which 10 years ago, a decade ago, would have sounded mighty fanciful. The other really important um, part of this story to draw out and for us to learn from is around the, the, cro the cross collaboration that can happen across technology sectors. Um, my colleague, um, the Honourable David Parker, has already talked about some of the carbon, techno carbon fibre technology coming from the America's Cup technology that was developed around those boats. And this is what is so important around getting critical mass of technology in this country, so that we can have that kind of cross-pollination and collabor collaboration across industries, so that we can grow an economy that is based on innovation, it is based on technology, and it is based on knowledge. And this speaks very clearly to that, Mr Speaker, and why when you have a success like, the, like this or like the technology in the, America, um, the America's um, Cup, suppose, you can't always predict what the spin-off commercial opportunities or the further technology um, opportunities are going to be from that, um, that, period, that, that work. And I think that's something that we, as legislators, should always remember. The other thing is we um, are passing this legislation. I think that it is 
apt and timely for us to think about the kind of economy that we want to create if we're seeing Rocket Lab as one of the, the um, success stories here and what we need to be doing to plan for that future. And Mr Speaker, that's why I am most proud of the work that the Labor Party has done over the last three years in the Future of Work Commission, where we have thought long and hard about the big picture thinking around what a transformation of the New Zealand economy looks like and what we're going to require. And this goes right back into our education system, right back into our early childhood system, into our primary second, and secondary and then our tertiary systems. We're thinking about what are the kinds of skills that future workforces are going to require. Now, Mr Speaker, I'm not saying that at every primary school we should be putting rocket technology on the um, curriculum. What I'm saying is we should be educating our children entering early childhood and primary school today to have the kind of skills where they can turn their minds to these kind of subjects should they want to. If we are intent on creating an innovative economy, then we have to be far more innovative with our education system and, importantly, linking that to our future workforce and requirements. And I think that what the bill that we're passing here, the enabling regulatory framework that is going to allow this industry to flourish in New Zealand and for this to happen needs to sit alongside some other thinking within government and within this parliament that is long-sighted. Now, Mr Speaker, um, my colleague David Parker went through many of the amendments that were made at Select Committee to this piece of legislation. There were 11 submissions received in total on this piece of legislation. It is fair to say, Mr Speaker, they were all substantial and they traversed many areas, some of which were um, understandable um, and good submissions to get in terms of um, civil aviation and what the interplay that we're talking about an area of airspace that goes beyond what has previously been regulated and what the interplay and the safety concerns were there. There was also the submission that Venture Southland brought um, that, David, that the Honourable David Parker mentioned that talked about it needing to be explicit in this legislation that this is for peaceful purposes that actually we are talking about New Zealand being among a group of one of only 11 countries that, ha that, um, that, that um, is launching rockets in its countries, and with that comes a great responsibility. And I think for us here in New Zealand, knowing that we're doing this for peaceful purposes is critically important to us, Mr Speaker. So Labor is more than happy to support this legislation. We see that it is the, the, a long-term project that is bearing fruit. And what we hope, what our hope is, Mr Speaker, is that we can all across this House, whatever side or corner of this House that we are sitting on, that we can take the lessons from this, the need to take a long-term view of innovation and the kind of commitment that it requires, the kind of courage that that initial investment sometimes um, requires, um, that one of the most difficult things about politicians being involved in innovation is that there is political risk if you do it well, that politicians don't want to come to the House and answer questions about failed projects, but anyone who has worked in the innovation sector knows to have success you've got to take risk. In fact, Mr Speaker, you could say a very successful innovation sector would be countering on a very high failure rate. And that is not always politically um, palatable. But what we have here, Mr Speaker, is a success story that we can all be proud of. And I think we can also be very pleased that this House is putting into place the regulatory regime that we require in order to make sure that this operates in an orderly and safe way and for the right purposes in our country. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker. Dr Shane Ritty. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to take a final reading on the Outer Space and High Altitudes Bill.